Boom. The Black Lives Matter leader was just shut down. This has to go viral. Well, I wouldn't consider him the leader of Black Lives Matter. However, a rabid supporter from Terrence Williams, the notorious Black Lives Matter racist, Tariq Nasheed, I'm getting death threats from his followers. He is a black KKK leader. Go to bed, Tariq. Let's take a look. Too. Tariq Nasheed is the prime example of a racist black man. He is full of hatred. He is part of the Black Lives Matter organization. In other words, he is part of the black KKK. Tariq Nasheed, he preaches and he teaches hatred to his fans, his supporters, and to his followers. Tariq Nasheed, he sends his Black Lives Matter followers out to send death threats to people like me. He sends them out to troll people like me. Tariq Nasheed is a very hateful, evil person. And he need to go to bed because he got to be sick. So he need to take some third flu and go to sleep. Okay. Tariq Nasheed need to lay it down. Tariq Nasheed is the devil. So Tariq Nasheed, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And for those of you who do not know who this man is, Tariq Nasheed, he is a black supremacist who has a very small-minded view on the way the world actually is. Uh, with the deep state and the people that control the earth, it gets far more complicated than typically black supremacists would see. Uh, most of their entire world revolves around being oppressed by white people, blaming white people for most of their own problems, and never taking responsibility for their own actions. So black supremacists through and through, very narrow-minded. But in case any of you have forgotten, here's an old interview on Fox News with Tariq Nasheed. Let's take a look. And would have been if it weren't for the fast response of an Ohio State University police officer pictured there on the screen. He shot the killer dead within minutes. That officer is being praised tonight as a hero, of course. But not everyone on the activist left is impressed by what he did. Some have imputed racial motives to the shooting. Among those is radio show host and author Tariq Nasheed. He tweeted this yesterday. So white officer Alan Harukjo shot and killed the black Somali stabbing suspect in Ohio and is being paraded as a hero. That's interesting. Well, Tariq joins us now to explain. Tariq, thanks a lot for coming on the show. This yes, seems thank you so much for having me, Tucker. Oh, of course. This struck me when I read it as a pretty cowardly thing for you to say for a bunch of reasons, but mostly because it's so imprecise. Okay. You don't spell out what you mean. You say that that's interesting. Why is that interesting? Would it have been better if this guy, the murderer, had continued to hack people with a butcher knife? Is that what you're saying? What are you saying? No, I'm saying, Tucker, what's cowardly is to make up a false narrative that I didn't say or even imply by saying that I was not impressed or I was dissatisfied with the police's work. And basically, that tweet was very vague. It was very neutral. It was basically a statement. It wasn't even my opinion. So for well, you to start well, okay, off but, uh, the segment I, I saying it. that it was well, cowardly, that's Look, I'm that's having you on, Tariq, but, to explain but, yourself, and I'm, I'm asking you, what did you mean by that? Is the guy and, and, and the I'll be glad to do that. who shot and I'll be, this guy I, a hero, or isn't he? I'll be glad to answer that, but I don't want to do the false narrative thing because that's just very disingenuous, and I like to bring okay, truth just to power. The question. Now, let it's me explain what question. I meant. Yeah. Well, okay, okay. Um, no, I didn't think that the guy was um, um, uh, wrong for what he did. The guy was a hero. The the comment wasn't mean to ra wasn't meant to racialize the actual shooting in the event itself. When that happened. <sighs> online, there were a lot of people who played the race card, and the minute they found out who the suspect was, they kept talking about black Somalian, black Somalian, then they started talking about Black Lives Matter, then they started talking about Obama, then they racialized right. it. So, yeah. okay. that, so let me, that's, I mean, that's I'm, 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 so, I'm sorry, okay. there's, there's only so much I can take. I spent all afternoon listening to your podcast, which is the most racialized thing I think I've ever listened to in my life. And, and not which that is not true. Which is, also, which is not true. Let me, let me just say which this. Is you, not, sent which a is series, you sent a series of tweets here noting the race mm. and the nationality of the terrorist. And you also put quotes around the word terrorist. If you drive your car through a crowd of people and murder someone with a knife, are you not a terrorist? Why did you put quotes around I didn't that? say that the man... 
I didn't I didn't say that the man wasn't a terrorist. Tucker, are you going to say anything honest before we get the interview started? Or it's just going to be a bunch I'm, of projections I'm, I'm of your, you um, suspected, Why did you of your suspected white supremacist views. The word terrorist. Okay. Because what, I don't know if the, I don't know if the, I didn't know if the guy was a terrorist or not. I didn't know if he was a suspect. I didn't know if that was the only suspect. So I didn't have all the facts. I wanted to wait for all the facts to come so in trouble before I label people, which is, which, someone... is, which is what you should do. Okay. If someone drives his car through a crowd of people, here's what we knew from the first moment this happened. A guy drove his car through a crowd of people, intentionally hitting them, and then he attacked one of them with a knife. What else do you need to know in order to conclude that man is committing an act of terrorism? What, what, what's the missing piece there well, for you? We didn't get all the facts initially because initially they said that there were other suspects. So I didn't have all the facts in. So I wasn't in the position to label anybody or bring my opinion to the table. I wanted no, to wait to see what all the facts were before I labeled people. No, and that's no, what you, you should do, No, Tucker. you didn't. You, you, what you were trying to do I is incite race hatred, which is what you do for a living, making this about race from the very start when, in fact, race played no role. Now, you make the claim repeatedly in your writings and on your show that this is a, quote, white supremacist country. The guy who did this right. was imported here at taxpayer expense from Somalia. He was living, I believe, entirely on taxpayer expense. It was government-subsidized right. education in Ohio State. Why would a white supremacist right. country import Africans in large numbers and then pay for them to live here? I, I don't understand. It doesn't speak well, in narratives. It doesn't really fit your narrative, does it? So we don't live in a system of complete white supremacy? Everybody's lying, Tucker? Huh. So the overwhelming majority of immigrants to this country are non-white. Why, why would a white supremacist country import massive numbers of non-white immigrants? Not to well, when you mind, say non-white, I mean, they're, 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 no, no, but there's Hispanic people who you say are okay. non-white, but they're labeled as white. There are a lot of people who are classified as white that you say are non-white. So you play this racialized game. So who's non-white okay. and who's white? Okay. Look, I guess the point I'm making is that it's not 1955. It's a totally different country from the one you seem to be addressing not on really. Twitter not and really. in your podcast. Well, not then, really. Then it, it answer this. Your How is it different, sir? In your tweet, it, it's different in this way. It is an entirely multi-ethnic right. country. It's not just black people and white people, one oppressing the other. It's a much more complicated landscape, as you may have noticed if you go outside. And so when you tweet out that this is a story of a white man killing a black man, that is misleading. That's not at all what happened. There was no racial motive that we know of no. here, and you're implying there was. I didn't say there was a racial motive. Because it serves your financial... Well, of course you did. You said I that didn't white say that. officer I mean, shot this is, a black um, Somali Tucker, suspect. Tucker. Tucker. This is Fox News. You guys are the race casino. Forget about the race card. You play the race casino. Right. So it's very hypocritical for me to specify the race of a suspect and a police officer. And that yeah. is supposed to be some kind of problem when you guys do it all the time and arbitrarily blame black oh, people okay. for everything okay. negative in this country. Here, here I'm not even going to rise to the bait. Let me just say that I think when normal people I'm are excluding you from that category, watch what happened yesterday. I'll, I'll, they I'll didn't that. see right. They didn't see the race of the terrorist or the race of the cop. They saw an American stopping a lunatic right. from murdering more people on a college campus. So and why did your you, white supremacist colleagues make it racial? So why did they make it racial? Why did so many well, people I'm, in I'm the, um, the uh, right in, how, how did they make it racial? I, I don't know one person on any network who looked at this and said, here you have a white man killing a black man. They said, here you have a police officer, representative of no, they said, black Somalian, stopping a mass black murder lives from matter. continuing. So was it Black Lives Matter fault? You guys always seem to blame Black Lives Matter, and Black Lives Matter is any black person you choose to make Black Lives Matter. So right, okay. I'm following. I'm missing the thread uh, of your argument, but I think I, I think you've made you're your, not, your you're own not point. You're not missing it. Yeah, you got it. I'm not. You're, you're a Tariq, smart guy. Suspected white supremacists are very smart, so you got it. Right. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. Well, the European Court has just ruled against Russia. No surprise there. On Tuesday, a European court ruled that Russia can no longer ban gay propaganda. As if that's some sort of a good thing. They can't ban gay propaganda. Like they just cured Nazism or something. Daily Color reported, The Russian law banning the promotion of homosexuality breaches articles of the European Treaty, the European Court of Human Rights ruled Tuesday. Yeah, and I can guess where Putin is going to tell him to shove that. Under current legislation, any event or act regarded by the authorities as an attempt to promote homosexuality to minors is illegal. The law has prevented gay pride marches and been used to detain gay rights activists, private individuals deemed to be promoting homosexual behavior among minors, face roughly $85 fines, while officials risk paying 10 times that amount, and businesses and schools can be fined up to $8,500. The court ruled that Russia's 2013 gay propaganda law is discriminatory and encourages homophobia. 
The law reinforced stigma and prejudice and encouraged homophobia. The ruling said and violated people's right to freedom of expression. The law violates Article 10, Freedom of Expression, and Article 14, Prohibition of Discrimination of the European Convention on Human Rights, said the court. The law served no legitimate public interest, according to the court, but Russia's justice ministry argued that the law is aimed exclusively at protecting the morals and health of children, according to BBC News. The court's decision was anti-national. United Russia Party MP Vitaly Minov told BBC News, It is absolutely harmful, and those who set up this decision are enemies of Europe. We will support the institution of a traditional strong family in future and shield children from attack by all manner of minorities. Pro-Kremlin politicians and Orthodox Church leaders saw the court's ruling as an attempt to force liberal European values on a country whose leader wants to preserve traditional values. The Russian Justice Ministry pledged to appeal the unjust decision in three months, according to NBC News. The ruling will likely strain already poor relations between Russia and the Strasbourg-based court which said Moscow had violated the European Convention on Human Rights in all but six of its 228 judgments in Russian cases in 2016. Now, without getting too philosophical, we, spree, we see the spread of homosexuality from a satanic, borderless manner, coming directly from the mouths of the people who control the earth. It's against natural law, and it's against God's will to promote homosexuality. But let's hear it right out of Putin's mouth. It's pretty hard to say it any better than the man himself. Let's take a look. What if uh, one of the men on either team admitted uh, in Russia that he was gay? Could he keep it quiet? Значит, я хочу вам сказать, что у нас нет никаких ограничений и притеснений по половому признаку. Больше того, очень многие люди открыто заявляют о своей нетрадиционной сексуальной ориентации. Мы с ними поддерживаем отношения. Многие из них добиваются выдающихся результатов в своих видах деятельности. Они получают даже государственные награды, ордена за свои успехи. Никаких ограничений. Есть закон, запрещающий пропаганду гомосексуализма среди несовершеннолетних. Да. И это, знаете, логика этого закона в том, чтобы дать детям спокойно вырасти, не влияя на их сознание. А когда он вырастет, он может принять любое решение, как ему строить свою жизнь, в том числе личную и сексуальную жизнь. И, и с этого момента, с того момента, как он становится взрослым, совершеннолетним, а совершеннолетие по нашему закону наступает с 18 лет, никаких ограничений вообще нет. То есть ну, ограничений и так нет. There's a tradition, though. Whatever he says is a tradition. There is a macho tradition in, in Russia, pretty strong one. Может быть, вы отчасти правы. Но у нас все-таки нет такой ситуации, как в некоторых, скажем, исламских странах, где смертная казнь грозит гомосексуалисту. No, that's different. В принципе, у нас достаточно общество либеральное. Is that true in the military as well? Нет запрета никакого. No restriction in the military. I mean, if you're taking a shower in a submarine with a, with a man and he, you know he's gay, then do they have a problem with that? Я лучше с ним не пойду в душ. Зачем провоцировать человека? Я все-таки мастер спорта по борьбе с дзюдо и по борьбе с амбо. И я могу вам сказать, что я как глава государства сегодня, я считаю своим долгом поддерживать традиционные ценности и семейные. Почему? Потому что однополые браки детей не производят, а нам нужно позаботиться о, о, о рождаемости в стране. Да, должны укреплять. При этом, при этом никто не говорит, что нужно кого-то преследовать.